Chargers may just be 2-13 all-time at Pittsburgh. Those 13 losses, though, all in the regular season. Those two wins, all in the playoffs. San Diego has never lost at Pittsburgh in the postseason, trying to make it 3-0 in the playoffs this weekend. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz, CBS Sports' Charlie Casserly. Glad to be with you here on the NFL Previews. Divisional weekend, and Charlie, when you talk about the Chargers and the Steelers, they played, as every other game this weekend, they played earlier this season. Pittsburgh dominated the game. Ran for over 100 yards with Parker. Roethlisberger had 300 yards through the air. They gave up only 218 total yards to San Diego, but they needed a late field goal to win by a point. So what does that tell you about how close these two teams really are? Well, I think, uh, first of all, the formula there. Pittsburgh is strong against the run. I think that hasn't changed. I think Pittsburgh can make yards in the passing game against the San Diego secondary. I don't think that part is going to change right there. The weather conditions, we don't know what we're going to have on Sunday. Last time it started snowing at the beginning of the game. You know the field won't be any good. It'll be soft, mushy, slow, sloppy. That's what Pittsburgh's field is always like. So um, I think the basic formula of the game really hasn't changed a lot. But San Diego is playing better on offense. That's the difference. How much do you take into account that San Diego is coming into this game with all the momentum? The overtime win against Indianapolis and Pittsburgh had a week off and they played a meaningless game against Cleveland the week before that. I, I think momentum always plays a, a factor in the playoffs and we've seen it uh, last year with the Giants. We saw it with the Steelers a couple years ago. Uh, we saw it with the Colts when they won the Super Bowl a few years ago. So I think it plays into the factor because here's the thing with San Diego. If we were sitting here in August, San Diego everyone would predict that San Diego would be in this game and Pittsburgh would be in this yep. game. So well, guess what? They're both in the game. San Diego's won five in a row. Very impressively down the stretch. Beating Tampa on the road. Beating Denver at home. They had to win both of those games. Beating quote, potential playoff teams. Beating the Colts who had won 12 games. They're playing well right now. The passing the attack is clicking. Their defense against the runs improved. Uh, this, no one should be surprised these two teams, two teams are playing right now. Now, the player that in August you thought you may have would be LaDainian Tomlinson. He's most likely not going to play. He admitted that himself this week that he is doubtful for this game because the tendon is, in fact, uh, separated from, from the groin. Uh, so that means it's Darren Sproles. That was a good thing last week, and he was the X factor. Can he be an X factor again this weekend? Well, I think he can be an X factor in this game. I think we're, here's where it is, though. I, I, I don't see him gaining a lot of yards rushing because nobody does against that Pittsburgh defense, and the field will slow him down. Here is what to watch on him. Watch him on special teams. Punt returns, kickoff returns. That can be dangerous on a slippery field because the tacklers are the ones, they don't know where they're going. The runner knows where he's going. Also in the passing game, in space, coming out of the backfield. Those are the type of plays I'm going to watch in this game where he could be effective on. All year long, we've talked about this guy having the potential to get into games and be effective. It's not a surprise to us that he's played well. He got the opportunity. He did it this opportunity might be a little bit different in where he can be successful. On the other side, uh, Ben Roth, we talked about Ladinian Tomlinson's injury. It's time you got to talk about Ben Roethlisberger's injury. Uh, coming off the concussion against Cleveland, now he's going to play. He practiced all week. He was cleared by doctors. But you're coming off a concussion. Does anything concern you about that? Well, I don't think so. I, I, I think if he's had a week to practice, and, and I talked to the Steelers right after that game, and, and they felt optimistic about him being able to play that early on. My, and obviously I wasn't there in the locker room, but my experience tells me that when you can get that kind of a medical report right after the game, then they didn't feel it was that serious even before. Um, well, they did have some tests on him, so they, when I, I did talk, they did have some tests and they were negative. So I'm not concerned about that. All right, on the other side, your counterpart, Phillip Rivers. Now his numbers, as you take a look at Phillip Rivers in the playoffs, his numbers aren't staggering. But what is staggering, not shown there, He's 3-1 and one in the postseason, so he knows how to play well. But if you look at Phillip Rivers, the knock, especially this year, may have been the best passer, uh, highest passer rating in the NFL this year for a quarterback. But he makes those key, uh, crucial mistakes down the stretch, and he had an interception in the end zone against Indianapolis last week. Is that what concerns you about Phillip Rivers? Well, it, it, it's a concern from this point of view going into Pittsburgh. First of all, his career record on the 4-6 and six doesn't concern you because, remember, he has gotten experience and he's gotten better. Uh, when they lost to New England a couple years ago, that was an inexperienced young playoff team. They lost by inexperience in that game. They've got the experience now, especially Phillip Rivers. So uh, I think the thing about this is that, remember, the Pittsburgh defense will pressure you. I think San Diego's offensive line will struggle holding up because uh, that during the ball game. Uh, Phillip Rivers is going to be under fire the whole day. Uh, he's improved on his ability to make plays when he's hit, but he's still not an athletic guy when he's got to move his feet. 
Uh, that's where you're going to have to watch what kind of athletic type throws is he successful at if he is successful in this game. And the two Chargers tackles against Harrison and Woodley, that could be problematic for San Diego as well. Let's take a look at AccuScore and see what uh, the computer has to say. 10,000 tests, 10,000 results, all mathematical and AccuScore. Hey, it likes Pittsburgh in this game. 60% of the time, the Steelers come out on top in the computer. Charlie, give me your key and your winner. I think the key right now is, is San Diego's ability to pass protect versus their ability to get a pass rush. Remember, Pittsburgh's offensive line, not real strong against the blitz there. Ben Roethlisberger is strong against the blitz. He just throws people off. He's a hard guy to sack. So which team can pass protect and pressure the best Okay, we'll win the ball game. I think Pittsburgh will win that formula, uh, in my opinion, uh, and I think that'll give them the difference in the game. All right, it's a 4.45 p.m. Eastern start on CBS on Sunday. It's the last game of the divisional weekend. For more on this one or any other here throughout the weekend, be sure to stay with CBSSports.com. Watch everything else on the CBS Audience Network. For Charlie Casserly, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.